Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to the Cantaloupe Systems Product Merchandising Webinar. Uh, today, we'll be focusing on the three common pitfalls that vending operators make with their merchandising and tips on how to avoid them. Thank you all for joining us today. Before we get started, I wanted to provide some basic guidance for our webinar today. You'll notice on the right side of your screen, there is a go to webinar, sorry, a go to meeting questions box. Here you can list any questions you have for our, our speakers today. And at the end of the presentation, we will take some time uh, to answer as many of these as we can. So feel free to post these questions here uh, at any time during the presentation and we'll get to them at the end. Today's webinar is presented by Jason Pardue, uh, our customer success manager here at Cantaloupe, and Derek Franklin, president and owner at Cajun Vending. So Jason has been with Cantaloupe for over five years, serving as a mem member of our customer success team. He's been in the vending industry for over 25 years, serving in various vending operations positions, starting as a route driver and ending up as a senior operations manager for North County Vending, which has 13 branch operations uh, in California. Jason was the one to lead the implementation of SEED uh, into NC NCV's operations and became the first multi-branch deployment for SEED of, can for, of SEED for Cantaloupe. Welcome, Jason. Thank Derek you, Franklin, as I, yeah. Derek Franklin, as, as I mentioned, is the president and third generation owner uh, Cajun Vending, a vending operator that is based out of home of Louisiana. Derek joined Cajun Vending uh, as a route driver uh, and has since been with the company for over 11 years. Derek spearheaded the integration of the seed platform and was able to fully integrate three of their routes of seed in only four months. Welcome, Jared. Thank you. In today's webinar, we're going to be going over a few things. First, we're going to start with a quick overview of the seed platform, uh, then going into the challenges of product merchandising that many operators face today, and then the three most common merchandising pitfalls that we see operators falling into. After that, Jason will take us through a live seed pro demo showing us best practices to optimize our merchandising, and we will have Derek talk about Cajun vending and the results that he's seen by integrating seed into the merchandising decision process. Lastly, Jason will recap some of his best practices for merchandising, and then we'll open, the, open it up for the Q&A questions that have been submitted. So first, uh, let's give a, a quick overview of the seed platform. Uh, one of the great things about seed and what we offer at Cantaloupe is the way that we are able to enable off operators like Derek at Cajun Vending to manage their entire operation mm -hmm. in one central place by offering a comprehensive portfolio of vending solutions, uh, all the way from cashless payments to micro market management. Uh, but what's also great is that our technology, it really does play well with others. And what I mean by that is, is with our VDI capabilities, if you have a VMS or some cashless mm -hmm. hardware that you're happy with, you can still reap the benefit, benefits of using speed to manage your operations and start saving on cost. Very often you can do this also with uh, no additional hardware installation. As I said, we have Seed Cashless, with, which enables you to accept cashless payments at your vending machine. Uh, seed Office, which allows you to really take control of your operations from the warehouse to the money room to accounting practices, all housed within that one Seed Office uh, platform. Seed Pro, which allows operators to dynamically schedule their routes and know where to go when to go and what to take to ensure that they are giving their customers the best service and satisfaction. We also have seed delivery, which allows operators to automate their OCS operations into seed by utilizing our easy to use smartphone or tablet functionality. And lastly is seed markets, which enables operators to manage their micro markets into the seed platform and to leverage tools uh, like seed mobile to service and inventory the, their machine. Uh, C Markets is getting ready for, for the full, full launch coming very soon, and we'll be having a full product release coming uh, in early Q1 of, of next year. So today, we're going to be focusing mainly on Seed Pro and the tools uh, it, uh, it uses to optimize product merchandising decisions. 
And now uh, I'd like to turn it over to Jason to, to begin talking about with the, the challenges operators are running into today with merchandising and why it's so important. Thank you, Adrian. So some of the challenges today is, is changing up that product mix uh, for the machines. Um, it's time consuming, it's complicated in a lot of the VMSs. It's about looking at reports, trying to take that data, manipulate that data, give you the, the correct tempo to, to get you the, the correct data that you need to make, to make those good business decisions. Um, you know, to change your product mix on a route, um, it's less likely it's to be done on a frequent basis with the, with the complicated tools that we typically have worked with um, in the past. One of the other challenges is drivers making decisions. When drivers have control of what they're, were, they're able to put in those machines, they're going to make decisions based on um, a, a few simple tasks. And one, one of them is customer feedback. Customer feedback can be really good, but can, it can also be misleading. Uh, customer feedback can give you, you know, diet cherry vanilla Dr. Pepper, but that's one person's opinion of what they want to see in the machine. When you have limited uh, selections that you can put into machines, it's not like a grocery store. You really want to maximize what, what products are in there and put in the, the products that are giving you the highest volume, which is, is the demand from the, the customer. There will also be some, some decisions made by drivers on just their personal preference. So they might put in something that they like because they like it and they think other people should like it as well or are going to like it as well. So taking away some of that, that driver influence and using true, true data to make those decisions is really important. And there's no easy way to make merchandise decisions based on customer demand, right? Many vending machines are, are not set up to enable operators to quickly and easily make product merchandising decisions based on the real data. You're, you're gonna run a report, then you have to go in, manipulate that report to give you the, the information to make that decision, and then you have to go in and implement that product change. Um, one, of the other, one of the other challenges I think that people run into, and I'm gonna ask Derek to step, step in on this, is, is dealing with suppliers, and, and when and you receive deals, when you get specific deals, you might have Frito-Lay product of the month or, or certain uh, deals that you get from those suppliers, and how do you get those into the machines? So Derek, can you speak a little bit about how you deal with some of that? Yeah, sure. Uh, what we do at Cajun Vending, we have, we have made a spiral that is just, we call it Frito-Lay New. Um, as everyone knows, we get, everyone has to get 10 cases of the new item of the quarter, just, just to get your rebates. Uh, sometimes they give you some good stuff, sometimes they, they don't. Um, but we all know we get our 10 cases, and if it sells, we, we tend to hold it. Um, when it doesn't sell, we tend to switch it out with other items. Um, particularly, what I like to do is when, when a broker gives you a deal, you know, if you buy five cases, I'll send you one free. I'll go ahead and get the five cases, get the one free, and we'll go ahead and put it in that spiral. That way we don't have to do a mass product change. We don't have to bring the product in because we all know when, when we pre pit, it's very hard to bring a new item in. And that way we can bring an item in, test it, and see if it works. Excellent. Thank you, Derek. Mm -hmm. So, why is this important? The static product mix means less money in your pocket, right? The, the set it and forget the set it and forget it doesn't work and a lot of times what we see happening is because of the struggles with merchandising being so complex what operators are, are tending to do is is whatever whatever mix went out in that machine from the time that we put it on a new new customer site that's really where it stays right so you got the same product mix in there all the time very few product changes occurring um, not paying attention to, to par levels and this all rec uh, results in an increase in spoilage and cost to you as an operator. Drivers often will, will, will not make merchandise decisions to maximize profits. So a driver that's paid on, say, an hourly basis might not put products in that are going to sell. And what that does is it makes it so that he actually has to fill less product. 
So it actually costs him less physical work to get the same pay because if he can still stretch his, eight, his day out into an eight-hour day or a 10-hour day, whatever time frame you have him on, they're going to make decisions based on that. They don't want to put the product in the machine because then they have to fill that product if it sells. So sometimes we see that type of stuff happening. It's also about personal preference, right? If I like it, my customers are going to like it. That's not necessarily always true. There's a lot of different people with a lot of different tastes out there. So we want to be able to make the, the correct merchandising decision to maximize those profits. Operating with incomplete data will lead to suboptimal product mixes. So not knowing what sells good across your entire catalog or all the, all the SKUs that you carry um, really can hinder that. On, on some of the older systems, what you'll find is you have to run big reports, giant reports that might spool up for, for you know, 15, 20 minutes at times to figure out what items are selling well across, across your, your, your mix of machines. And then you got to go back and then you got to manipulate each individual machine. And it becomes very time consuming. And it's, it's not really a quick, easy way to get to the merchandising, figure out what I need to do, make the change and move on. There's all the report running that goes on in the background. And then I got to look at all that data, put together a good, a good process, and then from there make, make that uh, implementation. Three biggest merchandising pitfalls, the set it and forget it merchandising. You put a machine out there with a product mix in that you think is going to work initially, and it stays like that. And it stays like that for months, sometimes years, sometimes longer. Only using one data point. So you're only using either your, your driver is the data point. He's the person making that merchandising decision. Or you're, you're you know, relying on the customers to give you feedback um, to do that. And that data point is really skewed by personal preference. And then not seeing the full picture. What do I sell in other machines across my catalog that sell well that I might not have in these particular machines? I can make good decisions based on that. If, if a particular product sells in other machines in my same marketplace really well and I don't have it in my current machine that I'm looking at, then it might be a good decision to bring that, that particular product into this machine and get rid of one of those items that's not selling. So looking at the whole picture is really important to do. We're going to step in now to a, a Seed Pro demo. And um, I'm going to walk through some of the basics of some of the tools that I like to use uh, when I'm looking at merchandising and how I would want to merchandise. The first one I call what I call low-hanging fruit. Um, in Cantaloupe, we have what's called coil alerts. So in my alerts tab, I can go to my coil alerts, and I can run a report that would show me all my, my coils that haven't turned in a certain number of days. So I'm just going to type in, show me all the coils in my catalog that haven't turned for 150 days. And immediately what I pull up is I have 183 coils across my catalog that haven't turned in 150 or more days. I can easily make some, some good business decisions based on that. Now there's a couple of things with this tab that it might do. It's going gonna, it's gonna to point to one of two things. Either I have product in this machine that do, just doesn't sell, the customers don't buy it, or it can also point to the fact that I might have a, a coil jam or a column jam or a coil that's not turning um, that I would want to also go look at. So. In my coil alerts, I can really quickly get into those machines where product's not turning. So here I got at Acacia Group, my asset ID, I got Rockstar and Coil B2 that hasn't turned in 276 days. I also have Sunkissed Orange that, in D7 that hasn't turned for 166 days. So I immediately have two items. I know I got four, four units of each of those products in the machine, and my total par is four. So it's completely full with the four. But if I haven't turned it in 276 days, I'm really getting to that point where I'm going to end up spoiling that product out. So I can quickly go in from this, and I just open that directly up into a new tab, that one particular asset. And I'm going to go into my merchandising wizard. And I'm going to look at those two particular items. Now, if we remember what, the, what those two items were, I got B2 and D7. So if I can come down, I can look at my coils and I can really quick, quickly get to those, those products. Um, I can sort this merchandising wizard any way that I want to. 
And in this case, I'm going to go into, and it's going to be B2. So in this case, I can see I got B2 and B1. Now I have I have that product in. That product in my coil, this column that says time in days, lifetime in days, tells me how long that product's actually been flavored into that machine. So if I've recently put that product in, it would short, show a shorter amount of days. So I can see I've only here, I got the high brew coffee salted caramel has only been in there 222 days, whereas my rock star has been in there 602 days i have two coils of it and i can see right now what i'm looking at is my last five visits last five times i visited and serviced this machine i haven't sold any of that so that immediately tells me this product's not selling i probably need to get it out before i end up throwing it in the trash right i have a very expensive product that i'm eventually going to end up spoiling out so i can make a really quick decision based on that and i'm going to get into some of the more details on making some of these decisions um in some of the other parts use, utilizing the merchandising tool but this is what i call again low-hanging fruit right these are the real easy things i can look at really quick way to get rid of get rid of some spoils and get rid of those products in the machines that are just sitting there taking up space that i'm not selling any of and getting in some of the products that are either selling at a higher rate or some products that I might not have in that machine that are a good mix in other machines or sell well in other machines across my catalog. So again, that's what I call my low hanging fruit. Next is what I use from my scheduling page. Okay, this is really where my preferred method is of merchandising. And the reason is, is I'm looking at a schedule today that I'm making for tomorrow. So I'm scheduling today for tomorrow. I can see what items are are calling me to, to the machines. I can see which machines are my lead machines within an account that are calling me to service the account in the first place. And I can make some really quick impact decisions based on the merchandising wizard to get me the right product mix, the right par levels um, within these machines to spread that service frequency out. When I look at merchandising as a whole, what my real goal is, is I wanna get, the, I wanna have the least amount of spoils. I don't wanna have a bunch of extra product in there with my par levels set too high, where I just have money sitting out in machines that I'm not gonna sell through from restock to restock. So I don't wanna have too much of any given product. Really what I wanna do is I wanna schedule my machines and set my pars based on the sell-through rate of those, those particular products within that machine. So what my goal here is, is to look at my lead machine. And here I can see this is a lead machine. And the reason I know this is a lead machine is because it's hit its product depletion limits. It's not being called in by another machine. When I hover over another machine here, I can see my scheduling reason is because of this asset, 494577, which is this one, is the reason that this one got called in. So really I'm servicing these three and this one based on the fact that this one hit its, its triggers. So what I wanna do is I wanted to go ahead and take that service frequency and spread it out. I can see, look, I've only serviced it four days ago and I only have $45 in this machine. So tomorrow when I service it, I'm gonna have around 59, 60 bucks and it was just serviced four days ago. So I'm gonna go into this particular asset and I'm gonna open that up in a new mm -hmm. tab so that I have my easier scheduling tab still there. And I'm gonna run my merchandising wizard on this machine. I'm gonna see what, what changes I can make. And one of the key components that I like to look at is I like to look at my average days to sell out. And what this tells me is if I fill this product to, to its, its par, it's going to take 7.39 days to sell that out. I can also see that I have my capacity here. So I know I can easily just bump that par up to probably 10 and take that one product out to a little over 14, maybe 15 days I can get out of it just by bumping that par up on that one product. So I can see those lead items. Those items that are gonna sell at the fastest, I have some space there to work with. So I know I can increase the PARs on these particular products. I can make a really good decision on that. So I'm gonna go back into this particular machine. I'm gonna edit that planogram. And I'm gonna go ahead and I can channel back and forth between these two tabs and see exactly what I wanna do. So I know my, my Takis I wanna bring up, my Doritos I wanna bring up. And I'm gonna give you a simple, a simple process for, for doing that real quickly here. And so, so B1 and A5, I'm gonna go ahead and max out those two par levels. So I'm gonna to go to B1 here, and I'm gonna put that at 10. And A5, I'm also gonna put at 10, which is my capacity. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save those changes. 
And so now what we'll see is I'm gonna rerun that merchandising wizard. And we're gonna see the difference between those two and what changes that's gonna uh, give me. So I can see no longer is the Takis at the top. The Takis actually drops down and it's all the way down here. So I have Takis now with a par of 10. If I fill it to 10, it's gonna, it's gonna take me a full 14.79 days. So I immediately made an impact to this machine when I service it tomorrow. So now the way it stands, is previously I would have been servicing this machine at about every six or seven days, sometimes less than that if I didn't get filled to par for some from some unique reason. But now I'm going to push this out out to ten days. But I still got some more work I can do. So you can see where I can really just use this tool just to take my merchandising, increase my pars on those items that I need to bump up my pars. And what I'm looking for in this case is. Typically on a snack machine, my recommendation is three UPCs is my trigger. So whatever my top selling three UPCs sellout rate is, I know that I can decrease my, the other pars in this machine. I don't need 12 of this gram of vanilla mini because I don't need 55 days worth of product in that machine for that particular product. So in that case, I can actually bump this par down and I don't have tied up money out in the field and product that I don't really need out there. So I can take this par level down. I can take this part level down I can take some of these part levels down okay one of the other tools that, that we have in here is to make some other other changes to this particular machine if I look at some of these bottom dwelling items or these items that are down towards the bottom here so I got grandma's vanilla minis if I fill it to 12 it's going to take me 55 days to sell it out well I might not I might want to go ahead and take that grandma vanilla mini out and put something else in its place over here in the merchandising wizard are some other suggestions and what we're doing in that algorithm is we're looking at what other what items sell well across your catalog as a whole that are not in this particular machines planogram so i can see right here red red vines is one of them and i can quickly go in and make that decision i'm gonna hit the green up arrow telling it that i want to go ahead and put this red vines in there and then i'm going to scroll down towards the bottom where that grandma vanilla mini was at and I'm gonna tell it, I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. I'm gonna do it as a pull, pull and replace. And I'm gonna go ahead and submit that. Now, if I, if I need the driver to change the price, I can also put that on there and that'll pop up in Seed Mobile to tell them you need to change the price on this item. So say it was going from you know 75 or 80 cents and now this is supposed to be at a dollar. I'm gonna hit that submit and now that product change is already in place. Tomorrow when the driver services it, he's going to get a full full par of that new product because I did it as a full pull and replace. He's going to pull out the gram of vanilla minis. He's going to put that red vines in. And let's see if we can sell some red vines. It's selling good in some of my other machines across my catalog. So that's a good decision to make. I'm not selling that many grandma's vanilla minis. Let's see if I can increase my revenue on this machine by making some simple changes. So I'm gonna come back into the easier scheduler and I got another machine here at the same location that has also hit its depletion limit. So I got Rockstar is, is now down to a level of four. Its depletion trigger must be at four or, or less. And I'm gonna go ahead and open that one up in a, and I'm gonna run the merchandising wizard for it. And I'm gonna again sort by my average days of sellout and I'm going to look at those top selling items again. So here I can see my Gatorade Blue on an average sells out. If I fill it to a par of 24, it's going to sell out in about 19.73 days. So I would at least have to service this machine. If I have a depletion uh, schedule setting, depletion one UPC, I'm going to service this machine every 19 days based on that Gatorade Cool Blue. Again, same thing here, 20 days, really close to one another, 20 days, 19 days. I have room on my par. So I can easily bump those two up and quickly make an impact on this machine. So if I were to do that on both of these machines, then I know my two lead machines, I just made a real quick change to. I'm gonna spread that service frequency out. And now I'm not gonna service this account as a whole as frequently. And really what I'm doing over time, as I go through and I make these changes across machines, I'm spreading frequency out on my accounts. And then what happens is the driver's route, the number of machines, number of locations that are coming in on your service are less. So those start to drop down. And that's really where you start to see route consolidation start occurring. Um, 
you get to see more more a higher collect per service, a higher fill per service, and that impacts your whole business really. If you look at the 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 full picture of of your business as you operate, if my picks are, are really big, my fills per service, then my the efficiency of my warehouse is going to be more efficient, right? It doesn't take a whole lot more time to pick um, once you're on a pick. Uh, if you're if you're using light speed or another pick the light system, it doesn't take a whole lot more time to pick 150 items than it does to pick 75. So if I can double that up, then my warehouse is going to be more efficient, right? The, they're going to be bigger picks for each machine that's going out. In turn, the same thing happens for my driver. It's really about what it cost me to get to the account in the first place, the, what I call stop cost, right? The time that the driver takes from driving from point A to point B or account to account is really where my cost is at. Once he's at the machine, the time that he spends in front of the machine, whether it's putting 75 fills or 150 in, really isn't impacted that greatly. So I would rather send him with fills of 125, 150 fills per machine if I can get to that point and have him be more efficient, do less stops, less machines per day, but, but actually his fills per machine is going up and his fills per day is going up at the same time. And then all the way back out to your money room. It really costs your, your count room the same amount of time to count $25 as it does to count 125, right? Because it's all about the button pushes that you have to do on your coin counter in order to get that process to process through to your, your VMS or to cantaloupe systems. So I want bigger collects because I also want to make my money room more efficient. So in doing merchandising changes, making these impacts, spreading your service frequency out, you really have gains in a lot of areas that most people don't really look at, right? So it's really important to be able to, to get in there, use the tools that are available to you, ap apply those changes, to these machines, spread your service frequency out, and have a big impact on, on all aspects of your business, from pre-picking to your route driver efficiency, all the way back into your account room and what they're doing in there. So some of the other tools in the merchandising wizard that you have, if we go into and look at this, uh, back to the first snack machine that I looked at, um, we have what's called out of stocks. So in the last five visits that I went to this machine, how many times was an item out of stock? So I can see in the last five times I visited this machine, all five of those times, those talkies were empty. Well, I've already increased that par, so I'm gonna decrease the fact that I'm running empty on this product, right? Now, the sell-through rate was telling me I was doing it about seven days. Well, if I'm servicing it every 10 or 12 days, that talkies is probably empty, you know, three, four, maybe five days before you actually ever service that machine. So you're losing sales on that one product. Now again, by spreading that service frequency out, spreading out what your average days of sellout is on your top selling items, you're also going to allow more time for some of the other products that are not as high volume to also sell through more, more units. Okay, so by spreading that frequency out again, you have a big impact on what your average fills is and what your average collect is per machine. So again, we have some other suggestions in there. We also have what we call decreased coils. So these are what I would call my bottom dwelling items within this planogram. So these are, these are items that are not selling well in this particular uh, planogram that I have. And we're telling you to either decrease the number of coils if there's multiple coils of that particular product, or we're telling you to decrease your par level on those items. I also have what's called, let me choose another item, a different item. So. I can easily say, you know what, I'm going to disagree with what Cantaloupe has to say here. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to choose my own item. And I can go ahead and put in here, you know, I'm going to put in another row of Dorito Cool Ranch. Okay, I'm going to double up on that item. And I can make my decision on what item I want to take out. And I can do it as a pull and replace. Submit that, that, that planogram change. And that's now effective for my pre-pick for tomorrow's service. Okay. So as long as I'm doing these planogram changes prior to creating my pre-pick, those go, go into action tomorrow. And when the driver services that machine tomorrow, those are going to go into place. So I can quickly make those decisions based on what I'm looking at when I'm looking at my scheduler. Now, some of the questions that we typically get is, you know, how often should we be doing this? This is an ongoing process. Changes continue. Changes 
business and sales continue to change. New products are coming in. You got to get those new products into your machines. And you want to continue to do this as you, as you schedule through machines. There are other ways to get to the same data. I can run restock to restock sales reports, look at it. I can just look at, um, you know, I can go in and look at a machine sales view. And I can go by weekly sales and just start picking through random machines based on my average weekly sales for that particular account. And I can say, look, I got an account that does really good. Can I get more money out of that? What am I running out of? Do I need to double up on some of those items? So again, I'm just picking one of the top selling machines in, in this, uh, on this particular route. And I can go through and run my merchandising wizard and increase my, increase my par levels if I need to. Or I can double up on the items that, are, that I'm selling out of. If I run my merchandising wizard again, I have those tools right in front of me. And again, I like average days to sell out. You can use weekly unit sales. I prefer this because really what I want to look at again is how quickly am I running out of that product? Because the items that I run out of the fastest, those are the items that are going to, going to trigger this machine for service the soonest. So Red Baron Pizza in this case and my cheesecake are my two top selling items. They're going to run out in 10 days. Again, I got some items. I got a fruit pie in there. If I put 24 in there, it's going to take me 36 days to sell out. I can either say, hey, this, this machine does enough volume. I'm going to go ahead and leave that product mix in there. I don't need a big impact on that, that machine because it's doing really what I want it to do. My collect per service is probably pretty high. Um, so the other way I can look at it is look at my bottom selling machines. So when I look at, I got a bunch of offline machines, bear with me here, test database. Um, but I got some machines that aren't doing so well. So how can I impact those machines? In some of the cases when these, what I might want to do is look at what items am I spoiling out? Do I need to have that much product in this machine? And again, the merchandising wizard is going to give me all that information. How quickly am I selling out of this product? What items are not selling at all? So here I got this, sells out in 15 days. So I got some items in that, that do sell. But again, I'm running out of those items that do sell in this machine. So I'm losing sales. I'm running out of those products. I'm probably not servicing it as often because I probably have a higher trigger where I'm cert uh, I got four, maybe even five UPC um, trigger on the schedule settings for this machine, but I'm running out of this product, you know, uh, only 15 days into it, but I'm running out at 28 days, so I'm losing sales. So some of these items in this machine, even though it's a slow volume machine, a low volume machine, only doing about 10 bucks a week, I can get some more out of this machine still. I can increase some of these pars on these items that are selling out fairly quickly, and maybe I only want to service this 28 days. So then I would increase these PARs to give me about 28 days, average days to sell out. And then I would look at these bottom items, right? I really don't need 483 days worth of Cheetos worth of Cheetos in this machine, right? Obviously, I'm going to be spoiling those out if that product's sitting in there. So again, some of the other items that I might have. So here, this machine, we looked at the previous machine where Doritos Cool Ranch was actually one of the top sellers. It was number two to Takis, and here I don't even have that in this machine. So again, the suggested other items is telling me, hey, Doritos Cool Ranch sells good in other machines in your catalog, but you don't have it in this planogram. But yet I got Cheetos in here, and sometimes even those top selling items, right? Cheetos and Snickers are, are down towards the bottom in this, which most people wouldn't think that would be the case. But in this particular case scenario, we do have Cheetos and Doritos, or Cheetos and Snickers, are some of the lower volume items within this machine. So I might wanna pull Cheetos out of this machine. Put some of that Doritos Cool Ranch in. Let me, let me change up the mix, see what I can bring in that's selling good in other machines that might sell good at this one. So I can make some really quick, easy decisions. I have all the data right here in front of me that I want to um, look at. I have my par, my capacity, my average days of sell out, how many times that item has sold out, um, what my weekly dollar sales is. I got my margins. So if you're using Seed Warehouse um, and you're, you're receiving your product in, we know what the product cost is. We can tell you what your gross profit is, what your gross profit percentage on each of the items that you're selling in this particular machine. Okay. So if you want to merchandise based on gross profit or if you got a tough decision to make on what item to double up on, I would go with the one that's going to be the highest profit margin for me, right? because that's bottom line dollars that I want to bring in. So I got some really good tools here that I can use to merchandise. 
um, and make some really good business decisions based on what I'm seeing sell through my machines. Some of the other places that you can go, um, you know, if you wanted to do it based on some reporting, you can go in and run in, in spotlight reports. I can run vending restock sales by item, and I can run this across my whole catalog if I want to. What are my top selling items in my in my um, machines, and what machines don't I have that pro particular product in? Right. So I can really drill into it through spotlight reports. We don't have all the time to go into this. We do have another. Um, webinar that we do have posted out to our YouTube channel on spotlight reports I would walk you through running some custom reports if you want to build those out in spotlight reports but I do have some other ways that I can get into that data and look at um, what's selling through my machines as my whole catalog um, by location if I wanted to so if I have multiple beverages um, that run that are running like items how do I get that balance of product mix between two machines we can run all of that out in Spotlight Reports, easily give you the, the same data that we're giving you on the Merchandising Wizard, right into a report when you're trying to get something a little bit more complex than looking at one particular machine. So there's a lot of tools here that make it really easy for you to make those good business decisions. Um, but again, like I said, my, my preference is I like to do it based on my scheduling. So. When I go into scheduling and I go into easier, this is where I really make a lot of my decisions because I'm going to have an immediate impact on tomorrow's schedule and what decisions I want to make. Okay, so again, the goal is spread that service frequency out, decrease my spoils, increase my revenue per machine, my collect per service, my fills per service, increasing my, my uh, warehouse productivity, increasing the productivity within my count room. So, Merchandising is one of those things I think we overlook a lot of times. And even me as an operator, when we were an operator, I think one of the places that we failed even to, to utilize some of the tools that Cantaloupe had um, was merchandising. We didn't focus a lot on it. Uh, we didn't pay a lot of attention to it. Um, so I think it's a tool that that is really right in our face. And how do we take this and apply it into our business and, and, and get more money out of each of our machines? And how do we increase our bottom line? And how do we decrease our spoils? Um, and this tool is right here at our hands. Easy changes to make. I can easily make those changes right on right on the merchandising wizard. We got the suggestions based on your entire catalog um, of other items, so you can easily make some good decisions on what items you want to put in place and those items that are not selling. Um, all of those tools are right there at your fingertip, right at right at the merchandising wizard. Um, you can go through again. You can you can look at that that easy those easy uh, the easy fruit. You know, low-hanging fruit by looking at those coil alerts. Uh, you can run custom reports out if you want to look at a location as a whole. Um, there's lots of tools within Cantaloupe that that you can easily get to at your fingertips. Merchandising Wizard to me is probably one of the most powerful that 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 you can utilize. Everything is right there. Doing it right from the scheduling screen, I have an immediate impact on tomorrow's schedules um, and their services. And I'm going to immediately spread that service frequency out. So by doing these two machines right here, I can easily, if I were to merchandise those through all the way, I can easily spread that frequency out. Instead of servicing this account every four days, which is basically what this machine's hitting at, four to seven days, I can easily get 14, 15 days out, double out the service on this account as a whole, right? And then that allows that driver then to on that other other week or that other day of the week to be able to actually take in some of those other machines and as i work through my schedule and start making these product changes on these machines what i'm doing is i'm over time i'm slowly working through on all, all my machines um, and making those good merchandising decisions spreading out my service frequency and getting more out of each of my machines So I'm going to turn it over to Derek. Derek's going to talk a little bit, little bit about, um, share with us a little bit about uh, himself, his background, and some of the tools that he's used um, in, in implementing uh, these tools in, into his business. Okay, thank you, uh, Jason. Um, so a little bit about Cajun Vending. Uh, we, was, we was formed back in 93. 
Uh, it was formed by my grandfather. Uh, he had retired early from the oil field whenever the uh, oil field hit rock bottom. And he was able to take early retirement. And um, he ran it for a few years, and then, and then my dad got involved with it. And then uh, from there, I started working after I graduated uh, high school. So I'd work, you know, summers in and out, like like most people that grow up around bending do. Um, in 2006 is when I started as a driver. Um, had my own route. Uh, we was doing doing really well with that. And then, uh, and then my grandfather had passed away, and you know that's that's when my dad had taken it over. And then from there, I I started moving into the office and started getting involved with more as far as, you know, fixing machines and, and, and moving them and all, all that good stuff. And now it's been passed on to me. And, you know, we currently have seven employees working with us, running four bending routes. And we do service over about close to 250-ish uh, accounts. Okay, so, so there, all the results. Oh. Tell, yeah, tell us a little bit about the results that, that, that you've seen um, utilizing seed. Okay, thank you. Uh, after seed, we were able to see what coils were selling out and what coils were slow movers. Um, a, lot, a lot of machines we had, we had uh, items that were just staying there. They wasn't, they wasn't moving. We also had enough items that were just selling out too fast. Uh, we have some machines that we've doubled up, even tripled up, and some machines we even have a whole shelf of a certain item. It's just, it was just amazing to me on how much you could do from from this and seeing what all you have in your machines. And by staying on top of the slow items in the machines, we were able to cut our spoils down, uh, which was increased profits. We was able to get those slow movers out of machines and face more of, of the higher uh, selling items, uh, which you know, which led to more profit. Which everybody likes that. Um, when when we introduce a new product, we always make sure the par is in line with the average par for that category in the machine. Um, basically, meaning you know, you're going to have an item when you put it in, it's going to sell. You know, if, if say if fifty percent of your chips are, are parred out at capacity, you know, you bring in a new chip in that machine, you're you're gonna want to put it at capacity. And that way it's new, it's gonna sell, and it's it's just something that you have to watch and stay on top of. And like like Jason had said, we just you have to constantly change items to, to get good results. Excellent. Thank you, Derek. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's you know De Derek's utilized uh, Cantaloupe to to identify those machines that with the high sellouts, um, but low revenue is and it's key to maximizing that revenue, right? Taking those machines that where items are are depleting out really quickly, either doubling those up or making sure your par levels are set correctly as we walk through, and maximizing your revenue on that on that machine. Um, minimizing your spoilage you know once you look at the merchandising wizard again you're looking through able to see those items that are selling out quickly so you know basic basically how often you need to, to service that machine based on those top selling items so the ones with the top selling sell through rate and therefore you can adjust the par levels on those other items down and you don't have a bunch of money tied up in machines out in the field um, in product and you're also Reducing that risk of spoiling those products out that aren't selling through as quickly. Um, taking control of that, that shock factor with uh, new items going out in the machine. One of the pieces that I didn't talk through was uh, multi edit, and I'm going to leave that up to the individual CSMs. But multi edit is a tool that you can utilize to do those mass product changes. Um, so when you have a new item come in and an old item's going out, multi edit allows you to go in and quickly say, across my entire catalog, I want to 
take this item out or I want to backfill this item with a new item co that's coming in. So it's e really easy within the Seed Web application to make that ch change in mass um, when you have new items or items that you're changing out across your entire catalog. Um, and you're able to get those new products into those specified coils. So you can easily make those changes. You know what items are selling, what items are not selling. Um, and you can easily make those changes in Seed. So let's talk a little bit about some of the best practices, right? So eliminating the bottom dwellers. And I use the term bottom dwellers because they, they fall to the bottom of my list when I sort my products um, in my merchandising wizard. Um, they're at the bottom. They sell out the slowest. Um, you know, by tracking those, those poor performing SKUs and either rotating those products using some of the other suggestions that we have of items that sell good in your catalog, um, it allows you to try new options, very quickly make those changes right there on the merchandising wizard, get those implemented into those machines, and get rid of or reduce that risk of spoiling those bottom dwellers out. Letting the data do the talking, right? The data is all right here at your hands. If you're using the data instead of pers personal preference or, you know, common merchandising mistakes, you know, somebody running a report out and that report wasn't run correctly, all those tools are right in your hand. Let the data tell you what you need to put in your machines. The, the data is not going to lie to you. The data is all there. It's right at your fingertips. Easy to make decisions. Easy to make changes. Allow that data to do the talking. Identifying products who have seasonal demands. Okay. So keeping a close eye on them around the change of seasons. So when you look at a merchandising wizard, one of the tools that we have in there is how far back on the data do I want to look, right? I typically like to look only five, the last five visits. Now, if it's a really high volume machine, I might, that I service really frequently, I might spread that out, that frequency out a little bit further, but I like to look at five visits. And the reason I do five visits is I can have those, change, those changes in season. So if I were to look at last 30 visits and an, it's an every two week account, I'm going back 60, uh, 60, uh, 60 weeks on that time frame. I could have had a huge change in my weather patterns, right? So looking at those changes in seasonal, you really easily and really quickly can adapt on the merchandising wizard to that. On those higher volume machines that you service more frequently, I can look at a, a more broad picture because the number of services is fit into a shorter time frame because I'm servicing those machines more frequently. Um, you know, pay attention at the, as those times seasonal changes come into play your merchandising wizard data is going to change when you're only looking at the most recent five visits. So there's going to be times where we're going to tell you, hey, you should probably increase the PARs on these. And there's other times we're going to tell you on those same items, you should probably start decreasing the PARs on these. Everybody knows, you know, during the winter times, your beverage, your beverage sales are going to drop off. I don't need as much product out in the field. I don't have to have all that tied up money out in the field. On the other hand, my pastry is going to probably go up. So on my snack machines, I'm probably going to be bumping my pars up or adding more rows of my pastry in there. Um, my coffee sales are going to go up. So all of those things come into play when you start looking at the merchandising wizard. And as you're bringing in live data, because we're bringing in either VDI from another device, you know, USAT or Crane or somebody else's device that we're bringing in VDI DEX data, or you got seed devices on your machines that are reporting every four hours to you um, at minimum. You're bringing in that live data. So we, don't, we see those changes as they're occurring. There's live data coming in. You easily can make those decisions on the spot. And then use the Seed Pro to analyze uh, demand trends uh, by SKU, right? What are the best sellers list? We're, we're giving you the best sellers right on the merchandising wizard. You, again, you can also run reports out in your spotlight reports. Show me the best selling items across my entire catalog. Or you can, you can build uh, channels. In, in Cantaloupe, in, in Spotlight Reports. And then you can run reports against those channels. Show me the best selling items that are in my hospitals or all my medical uh, field. And then I can have actually a really good base on what I need to start with as a planogram. If I run a, a report against all of my um, you know, hospitals or my medical uh, field, what items sell really well across just those machines? And now I have a really good base on what items should I be starting with when I put a new machine at a new account in that particular channel. So I can make really good business decisions on 
how do I even start? What planogram do I put in my machine when I put it out in the field for this new account that I have? Look at the other accounts that are very much like it. Um, and all that is right at your fingertips in, in Canva. So we're gonna go ahead and, and open it up for some, some Q&A. Um, feel free to post your questions. There's a, there's a questions button in there. Um, you can go in and post your questions. And I'm gonna kind of go through, depending on how many questions we have here, it looks like there's quite a few in here. Um, and I'm gonna answer all these questions as much as I possibly can with the time that we have left. Um, I'll answer, answer the questions and I'll even go in and, and show a demo if I need to do that, of that. Um, if I don't get to your question, definitely we're gonna capture all these. We can see who posted the question. And what we'll do is we'll have your CSM, whoever's associated, uh, whatever CSM is tied to your account, We'll have them reach out and help you out with the questions that you might have. So if I don't happen to get to it today, um, uh, we'll have your CSM reach out to you. So is this video gonna be available? Yeah, we're gonna post this. Anytime we do a webinar, we post it to our YouTube channel. So you can, you can find it um, pretty easily. If you just go to YouTube and do a search um, in YouTube, a, a blanket search for seed uh, merchandising, it'll pull our video up and then you'll once you're into that video you can see the other videos right there so we have spotlight reports we have um we did one just a little while ago on uh cash accountability and this one will be also posted and as we do more and more of these webinars those will all be posted to that and you can always go back and watch the entire video um you know and get updated if you happen to miss it or you had to drop off of, of a particular one I'm going through. Great, and and, and Jason, while you're uh, while you're pulling yep. up the, the next question, I'm also going to go ahead and launch a quick poll uh, for everyone in the in the audience. Uh, you know, we really appreciate you guys sharing your feedback and experiences on on the webinar, so we can keep doing this and keep improving uh, for for the next one. Yeah. So the next question is. The, the suggested items are top selling items that are not in that machine at that time, correct. So the items that we're gonna suggest are items that sell good in other machines within your catalog um, that are not in that particular machine when you're looking at the merchandising wizard. So how big of an impact on merchandising is warehouse out? So product being out of stock, uh, mispicking or fill number changes uh, being done on, on Seed Mobile. Those definitely can have a, a negative impact on merchandising. But when you're looking at average days of sellout, what we're looking at is if you fill it to par, based on the last five services, how quickly is that item going to sell out? So really what we're trying to do is we're trying to eliminate those, those types of um, errors that might happen, um, but it will definitely negatively negatively impact your scheduling. So when I go to a machine and I look at it and I say, oh, it's sold out of uh, Diet Coke, and I go into it, well, it might be calling in because it's out of Diet Coke, but it might not necessarily be a merchandising problem. Maybe the, the pickers didn't pick that item, and that's why I sold out as quickly as I did. I don't really need to make that merchandising, but the merchandising wizard itself, because you're looking over the last five visits is really going to balance that out and give you that info that look you don't need to add more of it in you just need to look a little bit closer at the fact that we just didn't get get enough of that product to that machine on the last service because the warehouse was out or um you know something like that happened or the the, the warehouse forgot to pick it anything like that so Merchandising uh, static machines. So this could be kind of a mixed question. I'm gonna answer it hopefully the way I understand it. So yeah, if you have a machine set on a static schedule, um, yes, you can still run the merchandising wizard against it because we still are still tracking the coil sell-through rate and the item sell-through rate. So you can still go through and use merchandising wizard on that. Um, if this question is based on uh, offline pro machines, that's one of the tools that we're working on. 
It's a little bit different algorithm um, when you look at an offline machine because of the way that we bring in data um, for an online machine or a machine that has a device versus an offline machine. So we need to build a little bit diff different algorithm for that particular doing merchandising wizard for Seed Pro offline machine. But that is something that we look forward to, to releasing in the future. So I'm trying to weed through some of the some of the more duplicate questions here. So what's a, what's a good number to hit for average fills per machine? Um, that's a that's a good question, and that's going to vary based on the the different uh, types of machines, obviously. Um, typically what you're looking for is you're looking for, um, on an on a average, I'm going to say, I would like to hit around 110 fills per machine on an average. Uh, when I look at an average across, and that's when I look at an average, average across all my machines, across my entire operation. Um, you, are, you will have some of that fluctuation because of the way that we run our algorithm as far as scheduling goes. Some of that's going to vary. So I might have a, a lead machine that calls me to an account. Another machine is going to follow it so I can not go back to that machine or that location um, sooner than I need to. So in that case, that, that machine that's following the lead, I might not get my 110 out of that machine. But what I'm doing is I'm stopping myself from getting to um, going back to that account more often than I need to by drawing those additional machines in. But a good number that we really want to try to hit, you know, about 110, 115 fills average. Um, is really a, a, a top no, uh, top target that we would like to, to get people to. Now, it's not always feasible for every operator to hit those numbers. The goal is, is, is if we can spread out or if you can service machines and get continue to you know, set the target, set, set the target high and try to reach those numbers is really what the goal is because overall merchandising um, has a big impact on what, you, what, what the cost of your operation actually is what it costs you to, to operate your business, what it costs you to count your money, pick that product, um, how much product I have out in the field, what my spoils is. It impacts so many different places. Um, but again, good average fills per machine, I would say is right around 100, 110, 115 is what, what you really want to try to target. So we're, we're at about the end, of the end of the time right now. Sorry if I didn't get to your, your, your questions. Hopefully I answered all the questions correctly, understanding them. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Adrian at this point. I thank everybody for, for coming out to this, this webinar. Um, hopefully this was, this was useful, good information for you. Um, and now it's about going to put it into practice. But thank you, everybody, for, for coming out and your time today. Thank you, Derek. Great. for for you also coming out. I appreciate your, your insight into some of what it's done for your business. All right, thank you, Jason. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you, Derek, and, and thank you, Jason, for, for jumping on. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining uh, this webinar. Uh, to answer the people's questions, we will be sending out the, the recording of, of the webinar to everyone that registered uh, in the next 24 to 48 hours, and we'll also be posting it on our, our YouTube channel uh, on YouTube. So thank you all for joining and we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. Thanks again.